Do you guys want to get your life in order? Hmm? Yeah? You. I'm talking to you. Don't scroll. Don't, don't go to the next video. Don't go to the next suggested video. I'm talking to you. You want to get your life in order? You want to have good relationships? Not only with a significant other, but with friends and family? Yeah? You want to become a more complete you? Figure out what your passion is? What it is you're doing on this earth? Does that sound like you, man? That's good. That's real good that you're asking those questions. Hey everyone, Anthony D. Giovanni with Sacred You Philosophy. I'm back with another video. But I got somebody that knows all the answers to all that. I really think that. I really believe that. And we're going to talk about him. His name's Carl Jung. And we got to talk about him. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, Carl Jung. You guys may never have heard of that dude. But look, he was a, a psychologist, a clinical psychologist in the 1930s and 40s and 50s, I believe. I think he died in the 60s. Uh, so he, he, was, he was helping patients for a few decades. It, he had thousands of patients and he was studying their dreams, studying their psychosis, their, their problems that they were going through in their minds. Uh, and and it was, he was an amazing, amazing psychiatrist, amazing psychologist. Um, but on top of that, he was writing a ton. I mean, the dudes collected works uh, all together like $2,000. I mean, $2,000 for a collection of books. Can you imagine? Um, and I really think they're worth that knowledge. But anyway, I want to talk about Jung because he, I think, I've been on a huge kick of his. And it's only just now, I'm, I'm 25 now as this video is being recorded, that I think I'm able to understand at all what he's even talking about. Because some of the stuff is hard to grasp. And even the, the two books that I'm going to predominantly talk about, Ion and Answers to Job, I've had to reread twice now. Because I read them the first time and I'm like, I barely grasp what he's saying and I really want to understand what he's saying. Um, so that being said, there's so much to unpack in what he's saying. I'm going to try and give you a general overview. Carl Jung, if you don't know, was a student of Freud. We all know Freud. Uh, we at least know of Freud's works because he was the first one to come on the scene and be like, hey, I think there's an unconscious in our mind. You know, there's the conscious ego, which is you. It's, it's, the best way to think of this is like you looking through your eyes right now, watching this video, hearing me, thinking that you are a thing. That's your ego consciousness. It's the, it's the conscious side of your brain. Uh, we've had illusions, ancient man's always had of illusions, to that there's another side to that. But uh, that didn't really come onto the scene until, it's, it's relatively new, until um, the 50s, 40s-ish with Freud and Jung. They made that thing popular. And now it's like commonplace to say, yeah, there's a subconscious, right? And we still don't even really know what that means. But it's more, most commonly accepted. Well, Jung developed that even further and he found, I guess the best analogy, and this shows up in dreams, by the way. He's a huge, Jung was big on dream analysis with his clients and himself. He spent like a predominant, the, the predominant last half of his life actively dreaming and writing it down in a crazy book called The Red Book, which don't, don't check that out yet unless you've read some of his other stuff. It's pretty, pretty dang crazy. But um, the best way to interpret the unconscious, the subconscious, is that your ego conscious, like I said, the thing that's you that's thinking right now, watching this video, is like a little boat. It's like a little vessel on an ocean, on a sea. And that ocean, that sea, is the, the unconscious, the subconscious. And within that subconscious sea are reoccurring characters, reoccurring motifs, reoccurring themes called the archetypes. That's what Jung called them. This is, this is prevalent because what Jung is saying is there are subconscious instincts, subconscious motifs uh, that will possess you or, or motivate you and you won't even know it, right? Um, I'm trying to think, like, there's a lot of science. Psychology is just now coming around. And again, psychology is a new endeavor. And a lot of scientific people, you know, they crap on psychology because they think it's all mumbo jumbo woo. But they're the only ones trying to actively map out the subconscious. And they've made a lot of headway. And uh, I think they deserve some credit just for that reason. But because um, the, the, here's the thing, I think that this is something we can all accept and we can all agree on. We are so uh, massively ignorant when it comes to understanding the human mind and the human brain. People have tossed numbers around with this, but, but the common consensus usually on average is that we only actively use 10% of our brain capacity. I mean, that's how do you even fathom that? I, I, I don't know, it's crazy. But, 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 but Jung wouldn't think it's that crazy because he, through all his clinical studies, all his patients, all his own practice on himself, would be like, yeah, dude, the other 90% is the unconscious. And it motivates you and possesses you. So, getting back to the questions I posed at the beginning. 
wanting to become more ordered in your life. You want to have more of a whole you, a more, um, more meaningful relationships, a more meaningful life just in general. Young talks about all those things, sometimes indirectly, because those have to deal with the subconscious. And we're going to get into that. This is mainly just an intro video for this new series I'm starting. You guys are going to have to come back because there's stuff that I can't, like it, we're just going to have to slowly, just not slowly, but like take this piece by piece because there's a lot to unpack here. But Carl Jung has the answers. I really do believe that. And if you're sitting there wondering, how can I get my life in order internally and externally? I think if you come back to this page, watch this series, you're not going to walk away disappointed. So I appreciate you guys watching this. Like, comment below. Let me know if you've read Young, if you haven't, what you think about him, what you know. Let's, let's get the conversation started. Um, th I think there's a lot we can learn from him, and modern man needs him today. So uh, comment below any of that, and then share this video as well. Make sure you guys tune in. Subscribe and hit the notification bell, because I'm telling you, man, this series, this Carl Young series, How to Get Our Lives in Order, uh, is going to be grand. Just a heads up, too, before we go. If you want to start doing your homework, or if you've read these books, that's great. Maybe refresh on them and, and get in the right frame of mind for the series. I'm, pro I'm predominantly going to be pulling from, um, I'm going to be pulling from Jung's Psychology and Alchemy, uh, his other massive book that has to deal with alchemy, which is the Mysterium Conunctionis. It's massive and confusing, but has some good stuff. Uh, Ion, which has been called one of the most terrifying books ever, and what I think is a sequel to Ion, which is Answers to Job. And those are going to be the predominantly four, the predominant four books that I pull for pull from with Young as we go forward. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you soon.